This year has had no shortage of misinformation on the topics of guns, gun laws, and gun violence, most of it happening as a result of February's shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Recall at the time that media outlets were parroting a talking point that originated from a gun control activist group, there have been 18 school shootings in as many weeks in 2018. Of course, this figure inflated to a ridiculous extent to include suicides, accidental discharges in police training settings, and other incidents that don't fit the idea of a school shooting in any common sense of the term. Activists made silly claims about the supposed ease of getting guns, that it's somehow easier than other aspects of daily life, even in the context of heavily regulated automatic or machine guns, which, as a practical matter, aren't available to your average consumer under federal law. We certainly do not understand why it should be harder to make plans with friends on weekends than it is to buy an automatic or semi-automatic weapon. But I get it, though. She's just a high school kid. She's not an expert. But the problem is media parrot these lines uncritically, too. Here are five things that are more complicated than buying a gun in Florida, says CBS News. Buying cold medicine, getting a marriage license, buying fertilizer, buying diarrhea medicine, or buying marijuana. Yeah, trouble is this analysis ignores federal law that governs gun manufacturing and sales in Florida and every other state. I didn't realize Floridians need a background check to buy cough syrup, for example. Or that Floridians apparently can't transfer diarrhea medicine across state lines without working through licensed dealers. Or that you can't buy fertilizer in Florida if you're a felon. And of course, the other glaring issue is one of these things is a constitutional right and the others aren't, for those of you who still care about that sort of thing. The gun control gaffe of the year came courtesy of CNN, claiming to shoot an AR-15 model rifle in full semi-automatic mode, I guess as opposed to the common sense partial semi-mode that we're all used to. If I wanted to fire this on full semi-automatic, all I do is keep firing. And full semi-auto mode is of course best fired with full semi-competent posture. The latest example of media giving us full semi-facts on the gun issue is in coverage of a recent study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which analyzed the deadliness of active shooter events by the type of weapon used. And truth be told, I don't actually have huge problems with the study itself. It's very limited in its scope, but the research is at least honest about some of those limitations. The much bigger problem is media coverage that has jumbled this study to say things that it doesn't. We'll get to that coverage in a moment. First, I want to understand the study itself. Using FBI data, researchers tracked 248 FBI-designated active shooter events since 2000, analyzing the type of firearm used with special attention paid to semi-automatic rifles. Researchers found that in these shooting events where semi-automatic rifles were used, there were generally more people wounded and more people dead at roughly twice the rate, though mortality rates for those wounded were the same regardless of the weapon type. For my own analysis, I'm going to grant their numbers. I'll believe their research in terms of the number of shootings and the counts of the wounded and dead in each incident. And if I grant those numbers, I also grant that for the shootings included in this study, the use of semi-automatic rifles correlated with increased damage. But there are extremely important limitations to this finding to understand, however. The first is simply the scope. Obviously, if we're talking about mass shooting events, and particularly only those by rifle, we are talking talking about a small sliver of gun violence, and an even smaller sliver of violence overall. But just how small of a sliver? I ran the numbers. The semi-automatic rifle murders this report is talking about account for roughly 241 lives lost in 17 years. That's out of nearly 160,000 overall gun murders in that same time frame, according to FBI crime reports. So to be clear, this study is talking about increased lethality in two-tenths of a percent of cases cases. Make sure you're playing the video at maximum resolution so you can see just how tiny that little blue slice is. And it's not that that sliver doesn't matter. It does. It represents lives senselessly lost just like the rest of them. It's just that if you're going to use this report from a gun control perspective and you claim to care about the numbers, it seems much more sensible to focus on all that red rather than the barely visible blue. Some other limitations to consider. This research sets its context noting quote-unquote assault weapons 
weapons were federally banned from 1994 to 2004, so they tracked semi-automatic rifles to see if the damage they inflict is greater or not. But semi-automatic rifles and so-called assault weapons, as formerly legally defined, aren't the same thing. Semi-automatic rifles can be so-called assault weapons if they have the right scary decorations, but not necessarily. And so this study is a little bit unclear. They start by discussing assault weapons, but their analysis does not track assault weapons shootings, at least with any degree of precision. We have only 61 cases analyzed that used semi-automatic rifles at all, with no indication of how many were assault weapons as defined by former federal law, though that is assuredly an even tinier sliver than we previously observed. Lastly, there's a limitation that the researchers themselves speak to. They have no way to control for the quote intentionality of the shooter, i.e. what the shooter would or would not have done if he couldn't access certain weapons. As the researchers note, in their 61 semi-automatic rifle cases, most of the time, 60% of the cases, those shooters were also carrying at least one other firearm on them, a pistol, a shotgun, something other than the rifle in question. And this analysis doesn't appear to account for the damage done by each firearm when there are multiple firearms present, as in how much damage did firearm A do versus how much damage did firearm B do. It's just simply if a semi-automatic rifle was present, all of the damage in that particular incident, even if it was done with a different gun, gets attributed to that semi-automatic rifle. The cautionary point here is this analysis shouldn't be used to say if no semi-automatic rifle was present, then X amount of deaths would have been prevented. That is not at all clear, and the researchers don't make that claim. All of those limitations considered, this analysis doesn't actually bother me too much. Researchers were interested in the lethality of different weapon types, and for the most part, they answered answered that question without overstating their case too much. It's research with serious limitations in its methods and serious red flags about how to interpret it, but generally speaking, the authors aren't making grandiose claims they can't support. The real analytical irresponsibility is in the media coverage of this study. The so-called objective fact finders wasted no time in twisting it to say things it absolutely does not say. Check out this headline from NBC News. Semi-automatic rifles can kill twice as many as other guns. Study finds. If you hadn't read the study, how would you interpret that statement? That headline reads like semi-automatic rifles kill twice as many people as other weapon types generally, rather than in extremely isolated cases. In reality, year to year, rifle murders account for less than 3% of gun murders, semi-automatic rifles, an even smaller fraction than that. Here's how that NBC News math looks visually. Rifles are in blue, all other gun types are in red. You can't get through their headline without serious flaws, and you can't get through even in their first sentence either. Gunmen with semi-automatic rifles wound and kill twice as many people as those using non-automatic weapons, a new analysis shows. Semi-automatic weapons are non-automatic weapons. Automatic weapons are machine guns. And it can't be twice as many. Do you know how many people have been murdered since 2000 with legally owned automatic firearms? Zero. Not one. Semi-automatics fire one round per trigger squeeze. Automatics fire a stream of rounds. This analysis has nothing to say about automatic weapons, since none of the cases it analyzes involved them. The story continues, recent attacks involving semi-automatics include the shootings at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, the Pulse Nightclub in Orlando, Florida, and Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, and pretty much every daily shooting in Chicago or any crime anywhere with a gun at all, the vast majority of which are committed with semi automatic handguns. Semi-automatic is just an action type, and at this particular point in history, the most common action type. So understand, journalists, when you say semi-automatics, what you really mean is just guns, period. This fundamental misinformation was repeated across outlets. Here's the first sentence in ABC News's report, quote, active shooters with semi-automatic rifles wound and kill twice as many people as those using weapons that don't self-load. That is false. The majority of the guns used in this study, 75%, were handguns, likely semi-automatic handguns, and they do self-load in functionally the same way semi-automatic rifles do. Both Yahoo 
Yahoo and the Associated Press also repeated the same falsehoods, the idea that other weapons don't self-load and that Parkland, Orlando, and Sandy Hook are somehow uniquely semi-automatic attacks and so forth. It's clear that these outlets aren't simply negligent. They're deliberately propagandizing. And I don't like assigning motives so loosely, but time and time again, I'm left without a plausible alternative explanation. If it was just ignorance or negligence, these journalists would simply repeat lines from the study. But they don't. Instead, they embellish well beyond what the study says in matters of both fact and interpretation. That's not simply repeating someone else's line because you don't know any better. That's inventing your own line because you have an agenda to push. And it's not just me protecting my own agenda either. I'm a pro-Second Amendment guy, and I'm open about that. But I'm also open to evidence that challenges my persuasion. That evidence must always be contextualized and comprehensive, however, not cherry-picked to fit a preconception. Anything less is not an honest effort to inform the public and let them decide their own interpretations with the best available information. Instead, it is omitting information because you think you would be better at deciding these things for them. That is not responsible journalism. That is not semi-responsible journalism. That is not full semi-responsible journalism. That is propagandizing, and the fatal flaw in that thinking is the idea that people aren't smart enough to figure it out for themselves. They are, and crap like this is exactly why public trust in media continues to dive to seemingly impossible depths. It's the same reason every time you click one of these articles, you're greeted with a pop-up saying, no, no, please, please subscribe give us money, we swear, we're great news. Make an honest product, worth consuming, and maybe then you won't have to beg. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter, that is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.